a dream has come true for us. Uh, it's a dream shared by many. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to the official opening of the Hans O'Heisen Wildlife Research Station. The late Dr. Anton Rupert recognized the veterinary threat to transfrontier parks and in response had a vision of a veterinary center of excellence. The Hans Hohausen Research Center will provide scientists and other experts with world-class amenities and equipment. What we see here today is the fulfillment of a dream of the late Mr. Hohausen. The facility has been revived largely as a joint venture between his charitable trust and the Peace Parks Foundation. It is very pleasing that the University of Pretoria, which has an international reputation in veterinary science, is to play an integral role. We hope to actually not build any institution here, but really more build a platform for research. The station was built in 1983, and it's on a piece of land about 37 hectares donated by Mr. Hanso Eisen. This is the best gift that he has given to this province, and only, not only to this province, to this country, and, and, and probably not only this country, but the continent of Africa. The station after um, the early 90s has slowly sort of decayed in the, into almost total disuse. At that point, the Peace Parks Foundation specifically, and in collaboration with the University of Pretoria, started negotiating to get access to the station so that we can start utilizing it to um, work specifically on the veterinary matters that influence the TFCAs. The expectation is that this will be a center that could be could service the entire Southern African region. There are three partners in the in the MOU that, that um, manages the facility. Um, the first is the University of Pretoria and they will also be the operational manager of the facility running it from day to day. The second one is the Mpumulanga Tourism and Parks Agency MTPA. They're actually the custodian of the land and the, the property itself so they, they supply the the land on the, on the facility free of charge, and that's their contribution. And then the, the third one is the Peace Parks Foundation, and they've contributed significantly f uh, with funding and sourcing funding from, from donors from, from overseas as well. Just to have uh, a center of this magnitude in this space of ours, uh, which is part of our Limpopo Transplanter Park, uh, uh, it's, it's quite an important one for, for, for our Kruger National Park. One of the most important things is to look at control measures, simple things like diagnostics, because often we cannot diagnose disease in wildlife. Understanding the dynamics of the disease better, because to control it better, you often have to understand the dynamics of the disease a lot better. This is one of the only centers that you find uh, across the globe where research of the interface between uh, the wildlife and the communities happen. It gives us an opportunity to um, work within an interface between um, the local communities and the wildlife areas and to address major issues that relate to disease. The University of Pretoria already has an established community engagement program actually close by within 20 kilometers from the research station. We provide primary health care, um, animal health care, but we also um, look at, at research in this communal areas because it's a very nice interface with the, with the wildlife and, and reserves so we can learn a bit more about this, this interaction of the, the wildlife, livestock and human. This is a realization uh, of one component uh, of, of the elements of a peace park. Uh, and specifically in this context, uh, the proactive uh, management of, of wildlife disease risks associated with the development of transfrontier conservation areas. So they've, they've fixed a lot of the simple things that one wouldn't even think of just to get these things up to a standard that everybody can use internationally. So I mean a lot of the surfaces were, were old types and probably dated not up to the standard we needed um, for a proper facility. They, they started off with just refurbishing the labs that was here originally and they've ended up now with, with the one wing of the building being refurbished with a few larger labs, nice bench space which we can um, utilize and also smaller labs for more specific procedures. Well I think the location of the, of the research station is completely unique in an area of this kind but also I think the other unique feature of the research station is the facilities that it has to maintain um, wild, li wild animals um, in an experimental situation where you can actually um, study the diseases in the animals themselves and hold the animals here. That's a unique facility and a unique opportunity. Our focus will be on TFCAs because that's the, the reason we got the facility functional again. But, but obviously to utilize this facility to, to its optimum, 
would obviously allow a lot more research to, or people to come and work here with various different uh, backgrounds. It doesn't have to be only veterinary, it can be any discipline, I guess, if the labs can, can give them what they need. Quite a number of people have actually shown interest, in, and I think one of the first ones we want to do is, is quite a critical one, and that is to find cost-effective ways of actually applying the current vaccines available for foot and mouth disease. I mean, it's, it's well known, and there's lots of, everybody controls for it with the vaccine. But there is a bit of issues with the cost and the, the application, the amount of times you have to do it per year. So we're looking to, to improve that. We'll immediately initiate a, a project that is of significance with a disease that's affecting the livelihoods of people in this area. We, you know, we started with this thing five years ago when it was just a vision. Uh, and it's quite exciting for us to see it developing into bricks and mortar that begin to bring you know, uh, intellectuals uh, to come in and make uh, uh, you know, things happen. You obviously want to go for the best research you can get and, and a lot of that would be coming from international uh, um, institutions. But we also want to build capacity in the region and not just South Africa. So I guess a lot of the students we'd like to get from the region with supervision from international um, experts. At the moment we have um, 10 one-bedroom uh, flats. They intended for, for the kind of research at the stage here for longer term. So guys that will come up for up to six months or even longer. Um, obviously they can be used for shorter stays as well. A lot of the research was also not only happened inside the station boundary but also in the, in the vicinity of the station. So we're definitely looking at, at a few different um, disciplines and, and the more multidisciplinary the better. We're looking forward to the next five years to see how this thing pans out. This station is actually uh, exactly what the philosophy of Dr. Rickard was all the years uh, and that is to uh, promote and facilitate harmony and peace between man and man and between man and nature. Um, and if you think about what's happening here uh, and, and the one health concept of, of uh, investigating and doing research on uh, zoonotic diseases where wildlife diseases are potentially translated to humans and vice versa, um, I cannot think really of any better practical example uh, of making that philosophy, of realizing uh, that philosophy in a practical sense.